energy powers the world and drives humanity into the future. As we progress far, the need for a clean and effective source of energy rises forevermore. The idea of fusion technology has grown to become a point of interest for all nations far and wide in hopes that the technology will mature into something that would transform the world. As a result of the pandemic, oil, gas, and coal prices have skyrocketed to a number we have never foreseen. The world now faces an energy crisis, and fusion could be the answer to the call for a new proficient way of creating energy. Nuclear fusion is the process or reaction where two or more nuclei combine to form one or more nuclei and other particles. This is what powers the stars, producing astronomical amounts of heat, light, and energy. Fusion technology tries to harness this power of energy generation. This idea all kicked off in 1926, when British astrophysicist Arthur Eddington published his theory that the fusion of hydrogen to helium is how the stars produce energy. This paper, International Constitution of the Star, marked a fundamental foundation for theoretical astrophysics today. Not long after, Robert de Escort Atkinson and Fritz Hudermann's joint paper was released, providing the first ever calculations for the rate of nuclear fusion within the stars in 1929. And as if theoretical astrophysics in Britain wasn't becoming complex enough, five years later, the notable experiments of Ernest Rutherford in 1934 were carried out. It presented that an enormous effect was produced when fusing hydrogen and helium nuclei. One participant of this experiment was Mark Oliphant, who was a student of Ernest Rutherford and led the early ideas of harnessing fusion. He first discovered helium-3, tritium, and deuterium, then as the genius he was, he performed the first ever fusion demonstration in a lab. Most global research and endeavor for fusion only paused twice since it began, the first time in World War II and the second being the Cold War. Once World War II was over, governments decided to declassify all fusion research and studies for they noticed that it could pose a threat to human life when used as weapons. As technological advancements were being carved out in 1950, two Soviet scientists, Igor Tam and Andrei Sakharov, came up with a magnetic confinement fusion device, the tokamak. To this day, this design is the most predominant and famous model of the fusion reactors. In 1958, the International Atomic Energy Agency, or the IAEA, increased global collaborations, revealing new technologies like a fully constructed tokamak. 20 years later, after the Cold War ended on May 18, 1979, the European Communities Commissioner responsible for energy research at the time laid the foundation and launched the Jet Laboratory. This joint European tourist was a project including 11 nations, Belgium, Italy, Luxembourg, France, Netherlands, West Germany, Denmark, Ireland, Sweden, Switzerland, and the UK, currently holding more members. It was around that time the US and the Soviet Union made a historic agreement to put aside their rivalry and work on driving fusion energy towards reality. Now this agreement is manifested as ITER and 35 countries are collaborating in southern France and JET serves as a test center for it is often referred as Little ITER. Global consensus for the need for fusion is growing as clean, reliable energy is becoming more of a priority. The pros and the cons of fusion energy while fusion is a very viable solution for a world's clean energy scarcity, like any other thing, it has both its advantages and disadvantages. There are generally two main benefits that can be addressed, which is the energy safety and energy efficiency. With growing population and urbanization, we cannot forever stay dependent on fossil fuels that have been supporting the transition into the 20th century. Further on, a more large-scale, eco-friendly, and carbon-free energy form will be in need. In comparison to other energy, fusing atoms together in a successful controlled environment allows for approximately 4 million times more energy than other chemical reactions. While a significant net gain of energy is not yet available, many companies work towards a more efficient energy collection protocol. The traditional process to generate electricity from fusion uses heat and steam to spin a turbine. However, companies such as Helion Energy in recent years has been aiming to incorporate magnetic energy recovery using Faraday's law of induction in their plasma accelerators, resulting in a 95% efficiency. 
They also battle the downside of the rarity of the helium-3 isotope by designing a plasma accelerator with a closed fuel cycle, allowing them to reuse the plasmas. On the other hand, some scientists aim to retrieve the helium-3 isotope not from the Earth, but from the Moon, where it is far more abundant. In fact, many of the resources needed for fusion are far more abundant on the Moon than on Earth. Further fusion introduces no risk of meltdown. This is because if any disturbance occurs, the plasma instantly cools down, and the fuel present in the chamber isn't enough for a chain reaction to occur. In addition to that, unlike any other energy sources that release harmful toxins into the atmosphere, contributing to pollution, fusion's major product is helium, which is non-toxic. So, how does fusion work? Fusion is a nuclear reaction where lighter elements such as hydrogen and helium fuse their nuclei to form heavier elements up to iron. In order for the nuclei, with a positive electrical charge of the elements to fuse together, the nuclei must overcome the electrical repulsions. To achieve this, the particles need to be very energetic in order to bump into each other. There are two types of fusion reactions one that involves altering the numbers of protons and neutrons, and one that keeps the number of protons and neutrons. The first type of reaction is what stars use to fuse hydrogen atoms into helium and keep themselves burning. The second type of fusion reaction is more practical for energy generation, however. Here are several fusion reactions that are important to understand. These reactions are separated based on their elements that will be fused together. The proton-proton chain reaction. This is the type of reaction where the number of protons and neutrons alter. This is the reaction that produces most of the energy for stars. The reaction starts off with two hydrogen atoms fusing together under insane temperatures to form hydrogen 2, an isotope of hydrogen with one proton and one proton, while releasing a positive electron and a neutrino. A positive electron or a positron is a subatomic particle with a positive charge. The charge has the same amount of power as an electron. A neutrino is a particle with a similar mass to an electron but no charge. The hydrogen 2 atom will fuse with another proton to form helium 3, releasing gamma rays. Next, the helium 3 atom either fuses with another helium 3 atom to form a helium 4 atom and two hydrogen atoms, or the helium 3 atom fuses with a helium 4 atom to form a beryllium 7 atom which would later fuse with a hydrogen atom into a boron-8 atom and break back down into two helium-4 atoms. The deuterium-tritium reaction. This is the second type of reaction that we're going to talk about and it is very practical for actual energy generation. Deuterium is a hydrogen isotope with one proton and one neutron. Tritium is another hydrogen isotope with one proton and two neutrons. Deuterium is very commonly found in the oceans, but tritium is rarely found in the atmosphere, but is abundant on the surface of the moon. The deuterium-tritium reaction is relatively simple, where the two elements fuse together to form helium-4 and release a neutron. The emitting of the neutron accounts for 80% of the energy generated. The deuterium-helium-3 reaction. This is the most promising type of reaction along with the deuterium-tritium reaction. Helium-3 is another rare isotope that is rarely found on Earth, but abundant on the Moon. In the reaction, the deuterium atom will fuse with the helium-3 atom to form helium-4, releasing a proton, which accounts for most of the energy generated. All these reactions generate massive amounts of heat, light, and energy. However, to start all these types of reactions, atoms need to overcome the Coulomb barrier. In other words, to overcome the positive repelling charge between protons. Particles need to move so fast that they can bump into each other and overcome this obstacle. To do this, extreme temperatures are needed for the fusion reaction. Since the temperatures could reach tens of millions of degrees, the particles reach the fourth state of matter, plasma. Lasers, which require massive amounts of energy, are used to heat up the particles and overcome the Coulomb barrier. After reaching the state of plasma, in theory, the reaction would be able to sustain itself but technology today is only able to keep reaction going on for a couple of seconds. To contain the plasma, different designs of fusion reactors and confinement methods have been developed. One of the methods is the magnetic confinement method. The magnetic fields will keep the plasma in the right place. There are three important reactor designs using the magnetic confinement method. The Z-pinch, 
the Stellarator, and the Tokamak. Fusion has come into the light as a possible solution for our world's energy scarcity, and significant progress has been made surrounding this innovative idea. Scientists have proved the benefits of clean fusion energy and with further exploration in this field by the government and private businesses, our future generations will definitely enjoy all the advantages of fusion. Thank you for watching this video.